Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, so we've done demand. Now it's time to meet the boss, supply. You ready? Hey, don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button while the music plays. So I've always found that demand is pretty intuitive for students, but that supply can be a little bit more challenging. And this makes sense to me because most of us probably have a lot more experience buying stuff than we do selling stuff. So my biggest advice is that when we're thinking about supply, you need to put yourself in the mindset of a seller. If you can consistently do that, you'll stay gold, pony boy. The concepts of supply are basically the mirror image of demand. So you can do this. All right, so let's define supply. Supply refers to the ability and willingness to sell a good or service. Now, what will this look like on our graph? Remember, I want you to think like a seller. So what kind of prices do sellers prefer? And if you're struggling with that question, let me pose a hypothetical scenario to you. Let's say you're at school tomorrow and your econ teacher offers to buy the shoes you're wearing from you, but you have to sell them to her right then. She starts by offering you 10 cents. You roll your eyes and don't even consider selling, right? but then she offers you 10,000 bucks, cash in hand. I'm willing to bet that you're gonna take this offer a lot more seriously. Some of you will probably sprint to her and have both shoes off and practically throw them at her. Besides being kind of a weird story, this is the law of supply. The supply curve is upward sloping, indicating that there is a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied. In other words, this tells us that as the price increases, the quantity supplied also increases. And when the price decreases, so does quantity supplied. Now, just one thing here real quick. Sometimes students at this point get fixated on a specific objection saying, yeah, but nobody would buy a pair of shoes if it cost $10,000. And you're probably right. But that's what the demand curve is for. The supply curve's only job is to show us what sellers are willing and able to sell. And sellers prefer high prices. See, that's not so bad. Oh yeah, and we can also see this information provided to us in the form of a supply schedule, which is a table that shows the quantity supplied at each price. Again, notice the positive relationship. Now, turning our attention back to the graph, what would cause us to move from point A to point B? The only thing that causes a movement along the supply curve is a change in price. In this case, the price has risen, so we have an upward movement along the supply curve resulting in an increase in quantity supplied. Now, hopefully this sounds familiar from our demand lesson, but a change in price causes a change in quantity supplied. I know it's annoying, but please remember that this is not the same thing as a change in supply. We'll get to supply changes in just a minute, but since we're still on our same supply curve, then our supply hasn't changed. Remember, this curve shows all the quantities we're willing to sell at all possible prices. The only thing that happened is that the price changed, so we move up or down along the supply curve to match price with our quantity supplied. Now, sometimes things will happen that will actually change our supply, causing the entire curve to shift either to the right or to the left. We know it has to be something other than a price change because like we just established, a price change causes a change in quantity supplied, but not a change in supply. And good news, I have another acronym to help you to remember the determinants of supply. Tigers. No, the teen tigers is not for our good friend Tony, but rather for technology. And you are, as your friend Tony would say, great. If technology improves, supply increases because it is now possible to make more of the good or service. If technology decreases, which typically means it gets destroyed because of something like war or natural disasters, supply will decrease. Now, just like with demand, we show an increase in supply by shifting the supply curve to the right, and a decrease shifts the supply curve to the left. So our old friend Ertl the Turtle applies here too. Increase right, decrease left. By the way, I want you to always shift these curves right and left. Don't think of it as up and down. Otherwise, this can easily trick you into shifting the wrong directions. Always right and left. Enjoy this meme from the 1940s featuring your mom's favorite rapper. Next up are inputs. Inputs include things like resources needed to make the good as well as wages to pay workers for their labor. 
When input costs increase, supply decreases because it's more expensive to produce the good. On the other hand, when input costs decrease, supply increases. The G is for government policies, specifically taxes and subsidies. If a government places a tax on a good, the supply decreases because it's now more expensive to produce it. This shifts the supply curve to the left. A subsidy is basically the opposite of a tax. It's where the government provides money to encourage the production of something. So this will increase the supply because the producers want to receive the subsidy. So they produce more. Sellers also respond to expectations about future prices. If they expect the price to rise in the future, today's supply will decrease because they'd rather wait to sell it for a higher price later. If they expect the price to fall though, today's supply increases so they can sell it before the price decreases. Another major determinant of supply is changes in the price of related goods. Just like with demand, I'm talking about substitutes and complements. Now, this isn't quite as simple as the demand version, because remember, we're thinking about these things from the perspective of the seller. So let's start with substitutes. Substitutes are two goods that can be made using the same inputs. For example, leather can be used to either make leather belts or leather purses, making the belt and purses substitutes in production. So if the price of a substitute increases, the supply of the other good will decrease because producers would rather make the more expensive item. Using our example, let's say the price of leather belts is rising. This will cause the supply of leather purses to decrease as producers shift towards making more belts and fewer purses. Complements in production represent two goods for which an increase in the production of one necessarily causes an increase in the supply of the other. I apologize in advance for my example, but suppose that there is an increase in the price of beef. This causes an increase in the quantity supplied of beef, which means that as a side effect, there will also be an increase in the supply of leather. Nothing happened to the price of leather. There wasn't really an intention to increase the supply of leather, but as a byproduct of the increased beef production, there is now an increase in the supply of leather. Pour some out for the cow homies. Lastly is changes in the number of sellers. If more sellers enter a market, the supply increases. And if sellers exit a market, the supply decreases. That one's pretty simple, I think. All right, well, that's it for supply. Now it's time to get supply and demand into the same room at the same time because that's where the magic happens. Until next time, this has been a La Money Production. Thanks again for watching. Please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure to check out the description for links to answers to the practice questions and some of the great study aids I've made for you. I will see you in the next video.